Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy March, happy Women's History Month. We are so grateful to be here. Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore is live. Please go ahead and share this link. Um, I am Pastor Jamie Washington. I'm here with Minister Renee Jackson Hello. and Brother Barry Miles. Good morning. I don't think we can see you today in the camera. Praise the Lord. Uh, and we are so excited about this morning service. We're going to move into our praise and worship. This month we are activating our power. And so pray with us as we activate our power this morning. Amen. Amen. The precious, the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Woo, there's power today, Lord God. There's power to the people, Lord God. And we welcome you today 
the Unity Fellowship Church of Morning. Good morning, family. Good morning. What a blessed day it is in this house and in this land of the living. We welcome you again today. I am Minister Hilda, and I'm delighted to serve today on, on this uh, with this amazing, talented church, Unity Baltimore. On behalf of my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Jamie Washington, and First G, uh, Sam Offer, and our assistant pastor, Reverend Carla Johnson, and First Lady Joy Johnson, and the members of this, fi this fine house of Zion. I'm excited, I'm excited that you have chosen to worship with us today. And <clears throat> we honor the uh, founding members of this movement and uh, that it would be the Archbishop Carl Bean, who now resides with the ancestors. Our presiding prelate is the Beatitude Bishop Zachary Jones and our senior Bishop Jacqueline Holland. We also honor um, our now retired prelate <laughs> of jurisdiction for Bishop Harris Thomas and First G. Willie Hinton. To all the leaders and members in the progressive ministry, we welcome you as well in joining us today. We honor your presence and we invite you always to participate with us. Amen. This uh, service would not be possible without the extreme talented media team that we have of Reverend Carla Johnson and Reverend Sean Robinson. None of this, none of this would be possible without them. And we certainly thank them for all of the multiple hats <laughs> that they wear in making sure that we have a platform to serve virtually. Amen. We have an exciting lineup for you this month. Our theme, this is Women's Month. <laughs> this is Women's Her Story Month, as we call it here at Unity Baltimore. And we're excited as we join in with the nation in serving, I mean, in celebrating <laughs> Women's, Women's Month. And um, the, again, we have an exciting lineup for you this month, and we want, we want you to tell your friends, your neighbors, and, and your family members to come on and enjoy, to join with, in with us as we celebrate this high time in the Lord. Uh, we have a powerful sister that will be uh, uh, coming up to the play earlier, I mean, a little later on in the service, and I know that her message will be enlightening and surely have you dancing in your PJs. Amen. <laughs> So again, share this link with all of your family and your friends. Sit back and, and sit back on that wonderful soft sofa of yours. Sing, clap your hands and praise the Lord with us just one more time. We, we here at Baltimore, we do appreciate the one more time because we know that when there's a praise in the temple and a praise in in this house, you can usher in the spirit and remove distractions out. God will open up a window and a blessings will definitely pour out. Because when there's a praise in the temple and a praise in the house, it is service time You're uh, here at Baltimore. And we're so grateful to have you. We're going to start off today in our service with our breathing. Amen. <clears throat> forgive me, on our breathing segment helps us to center and to focus on God. So breathe in. Oh, and exhale slowly. Breathe in again and exhale slowly. And as you are exhaling, you are releasing all of those tensions, releasing all of those fears. You are releasing any distractions that may hinder you from praising the Lord at just where you are and how you are. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us this day. We thank you, Lord God, <clears throat> for taking away all of the anxieties and, and the worries that might, help, might plague us, Lord God. Take away all things that keep us from centering on you and your love. Ground, ground us in your, oh, your powerful love and wisdom, Lord. Lord, we know that love conquers everything. Pour into women all over this universe, Lord God. <laughs> Pour into them, Lord God, the power to activate, yes, to their fullest and greatest potential. Give us the strength and the fortitude, Lord God, to educate, to 
affirm and to inspire as we stand, Lord God, together this month and always in your name, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. And here at Unity Baltimore, we we celebrate and we <clears throat> we celebrate libation. And libation is a ritual we do here to honor those that have gone on to glory or have transitioned. We honor the legacy, the lessons, the love that they gave us. In the chat, I want you to type in those names of those loved ones who instilled in you the blessings of love and, and care and joy, the, the, the legacies that they left you. Type in those names, say them aloud in your house and welcome them into this service here today. Today we honor, we, we call out the name Archbishop Carl Bean. We call out the name Minister Cliff Butler, Deacon Massey, Charlotte Lloyd, Alberta Lloyd. Yes, type in those names. Michelle Morgan, Pamela Renee Leak, AKA Miss, Miss Maybell. Yes, type in those names. Remember those loved ones and remember the love that they gave and they embodied you with to carry on as you progress in this life call living. We thank you, God, for these, our ancestors, and we welcome them into this service today. Now back to you, Pastor. Good morning, good morning, good morning. 
Welcome to the Woman History Month. Uh, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That is such a true statement. And Women History Month, we got to remember that and walk through that with a sunshine throughout this month. My name is Thinking the Net Man. I am here to give you the affirmation. The affirmation for today is empowerment. I have a purpose. I will walk in my purpose with confidence and grace. My voice is my superpower. I am love. I am confident. I am worthy. I am obedient. I attract other successful people. I love helping people win. I am a successful, I am a successful routine individual. I wake up with a winning attitude of gratitude. Like I have already won the day. I set my, I set small daily goals. I can win. I am a savior of my family. I am courageous enough to open doors even if I don't have the key. I am a leader. I am successful. I am worthy. I am the greatest version of myself. I know who I am. Yes, I know whose I am. That's the empowerment affirmation for today. I want you to carry this with you throughout the week. And remember, when something just doesn't seem right, say, I'm in power. I got this. I can do this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore, Woman History Month. This is going to be a dynamite month, and we glad that you took your time to come in and visit us today. Now, I just want you to sit back and watch how this roll. We want visitors who are visiting us here on virtual experience for the first time to please put your name in the chat and let us know how you heard about us. We're so happy you came to join us here at Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore Experience. We're a part of a more significant movement of churches across the U.S. and Jamaica. We are learning how to accept and appreciate the God in us and how God has no respect for a person. We don't have to earn it. We get it. Our Archbishop Carl Bean uh, gave us a motto that says, God is love. And yes, love is for everyone. Our founding Bishop Harris Thomas gave us a mantra for Unity Fellowship Church that says, God loves you and so do I. So now is the time that you want to stand up, whoever's in the room with you, and look them in the eye and say to them, God loves you and so do I. And so it is. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore. I'm Deacon Marie, and I bring to you today a magnificent Her Story moment. I would like to quote Olive Elaine Morris, born June 26, 1952. She was a Jamaican-born British-based community leader and activist and the feminist Black nationalist. And I quote, Throughout the world, the struggle against imperialism grows stronger and stronger. The Black women's movement is part of this world's struggle for national liberation and the destruction of capitalism. Only when this is achieved can we ensure that our liberation as Black women is genuine, total, and irreversible. And I bring to you a magnificent person of the movement, civil rights movement, and her name is Doris D.D. Wright. She was born in Greenville, South Carolina, 
as only 15. She joined the civil rights movement, serving the president of the Youth and Council of the NAACP, Greenville Branch, and secretary of the State Youth Council. In 1960, she was arrested several times for several disobedience as she led Greenville's first sit-ins at lunch counters. These sit-ins resulted in the Supreme Court decision, Peterson versus Greenville, that struck down government-aided di discrimination. As one of the Greenville Eight, Wright challenged the segregation of the Greenville Public Library. She helped organize statewide protest alongside NAACP leader like Ruby Hurley. Wright became one of the plaintiffs in the landmark Edwards versus South Carolina decision in which the Supreme Court rule student had exercised constitutional rights to their public assembly and protests of segregation. She went to the study, she went on to study at Clark College. While in Atlanta, she organized the Black Women's International Conference in 1975. She earned a master's degree in counseling and psychology from the University of Missouri. Later, she worked in nonprofit and government social services, specializing in mental health care, managing large staff and multi-million dollar budgets. Under the Clinton administration, she was selected to review federal grants application. She has received the NAA Martin Luther King Humanitarian Award, Elizabeth Duncan Coons Humanitarian Award, the University of Missouri's Distinguished Alumni Award, and a Rainbow Push Freedom Fighter and Legacy Award. After reviewing the Salisbury, New York, uh, North Carolina, Wright served as the first African American chairwoman of the City Planning Board, as an executive community member of the NAACP, as she as the interim director of Salisbury Rowan Community Service Council. She is a life member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, Inc., and served as a co-chair of Salisbury 2040 Comprehensive Plan. This is the day and life of a powerful Black woman in our Black Hair Story Month. Thank you, and may God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so very much, Deacon Marie, for that highlight and, and on, on our Black women and her story moment. Um, like our next speaker, I love new, I love to learn and I really appreciate that. Thank you for that. It, before we get to the introduction of our new speaker, of our speaker for today, I invite you to our announcements. Noonday prayer. Every Friday we have noonday prayer and we do it via Zoom. And you can see the uh, the meeting ID there. We do it uh, on Zoom as a, and we, we like to invite you to join us each and every Friday to take part in that. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to all of the March babies, Bishop Harris Thomas, Marie Kahn, Cynthia, Cynthia Garnett, Jeff Harris, Pauline Hazelton, Gladys Hicks, Annette Mann, our Deacon Annette, Molly P, Tanya White, Rory Austin, and I like to add my grandson, Christopher Jr. in there. On to convocation. This year marks an historic event down uh, with our uh, Unity Fellowship Church Movement convocation. Our theme for convocation is power. Here is highlighted the convocation payment options. You can take a look at that and you can also go to UFCM Movement, which will take you further as you Make your choice to join us in California this year, this year. Amen. <clears throat> I 
then we have some upcoming events. We like to highlight the last one, which was sat which is coming up Saturday, March 16th at 2 p.m. We have a trans health panel with Reverend Sabrina Castillo. And with the information is there. And we invite you to take part. Amen. And here at Baltimore, Unity Baltimore, it is our joy and, our, and it is our joy to celebrate, activate your power for women's, as we celebrate women's Her Story moment. As you can see, there's an awesome lineup of women who will take part in delivering uh, the message to you. And I encourage you, I plead to you to join us. <laughs> Don't miss a Sunday. There are five magnificent Sundays in the month of March. And I I, I just tell you, don't miss a Sunday because it will be a power in the house and we will be activating our power and yours too. So just join us as we celebrate, as we celebrate the power of women. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. And now there's a time where you can participate in this wonderful service. I invite you now to listen to this video ways that you can actually give today in our ministry. The first one is you, all our members and those visitors that have visited before who has been used to or acclimated to the REM process, please feel free to give through REM. We are asking our members to continue to follow that process. The link is in our chat right now. Also, for those or visitors who want to text UFC Baltimore, follow by whatever amount you want to give to 73256. And then we also have the Cash App option where our visitors who are handy and who are familiar with Cash App, feel free to, to go ahead and cap, capture your love offering through that. We appreciate it. We love you. We honor you just for just uh, thinking of us to chime in with us today. someone right now and that someone is you hallelujah thank you lord god thank you lord god i'm here now to introduce oh the powerhouse speaker that will definitely activate all of your power she is no stranger to baltimore and we here at baltimore we consider her family we consider her a member of this great church she is minister shanisha Davis, Dr. Davis, a devoted mother, minister, lifelong learner, and a seasoned educator currently, currently holds the esteemed position of Chief Talent Officer at Foundation Academies in Trenton, New Jersey. Simultaneously, she serves as a minister at Unity Fellowship Church, Newark, in New York, New Jersey. 
Having joined the fellowship movement in 2010 under the leadership and direction of Bishop-elect Kevin Taylor, her rich professional journey spans both public charter and traditional public schools, showcasing her excellence as a various leaders, leadership level. Fueled by her passion for education, she extended <clears throat> from a dedicated science teacher to a distinguished roles such as a science department chairperson, vice principal, school principal, director of curriculum, and instruction and senior director of training and development, uh, ultimately assuming the pivotal role of CTO. The love for the learning deeply influences both her professional and clergy work. Dr. Davis is an alumni of the Grand Canyon University, where she earned a doctoral degree in organizational leadership and a master's education administration. Her undergraduate journey commenced at Stockton University, where she obtained her bachelor's of science in biology after graduating from the Plainfield School System. Dr. Davis shares that <clears throat> why, shares her why in her work is to equip us all with the tools and confidence to activate our innate power. Dr. Davis' unwavering commitment to shaping the future of education, combating system, systematic racism, and ensuring access and opportunity for all to live a life of purpose is evidence in her extensive diverse experience, establishing her as an inf influential leader in the field. Amen. What a talented person we have coming up for you right after these words, <clears throat> the Our Bible Affirmation. This is my Bible. It contains basic instructions before leaving earth. It is a primary resource in the development of my relationship with God. While I believe it is inspired by God, it is not God. It is not to be used as a weapon, but as an instrument of liberation in life. I will pray over it as I study it, and I will interpret it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit within. I have the right to question it as I apply its teachings to my life. My heart is open, my mind is alert, and I am ready to receive a word from the Lord. Back to you, Pastor. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for all that has gone forth thus far. We are excited about the woman of God who will come and bring us our first sermon during this powerful month. Activate your power. Amen. Amen. Let your power fall. When your name is called through the doubters wrong, you are great and strong. Let your power fall. When your name is called. 
Hallelujah. Let your power fall. And that was a call to action. The singer says, fight this battle for me. Help my, my unbelief. Lord, I'm just so happy to be with Baltimore on this morning. So I just have to thank you, UFC Baltimore, for inviting me um, to be able to worship with you on this morning. Elder Dr. Jamie Washington and First Gentleman Reverend Sam Offer, Assistant Pastor Carla, Second Lady Joy Johnson, thank you, Unity Fellowship Church Baltimore, for inviting me into this space. And God is just so good. As you see in, in my bio, it talked about my why, why I, I do work, why I do clergy. And that's really because I believe we have a, a power inside of us. Everybody has it. It was freely given to us. And we just have to remind each other to activate it. So when I heard that the theme for today, for this month is activate your power, I got so excited. And the scripture that God laid on my heart to allow us to be liberated is uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. Again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10, and it reads, But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, my power, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. May the Lord God and a blessing to the reading of God's words. And in this verse spoken by Paul, Paul emphasizes the fact that God's strength is manifested or magnified, if you will, in our moments of weakness, showcasing the transformative power of God's grace and the need for us to rely on God's strength during challenging times instead of our own. So that brings me to the title that God laid on my heart and it's called Made Strong. Made Strong Boast. Made Strong Boast. As we heard, the theme for Women's Month is to activate your power. So, so while we activate, activate our power, I want to invite us to boast. And boast sometimes has a connotation like you're making it about yourself, but I'm going to invite you into this call to action and we're going to boast in our weaknesses. The be in boast is to be honest and to be humble. Where are you weak? To be honest and to be humble about where you're weak. Because Paul said, in 2 Corinthians, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. So step one, family, is to be honest and to be humble. Admit that you need help. Now, I know that I'm speaking primarily to persons of color, and we have a long, long history of not showing weakness. But Paul said that the power rests on us when we admit where we're weak. And, and maybe I'm only talking to myself or about myself because in my various positions, you know, I'm expected to have it together. I'm expected to have answers. I'm expected to be strong. And I'm expected to solve problems. So leaning into weakness isn't something that I tend to do naturally. So all of those things that I, right, I'm expected to do blah, blah, blah. And so all of those I words don't sound very humble. And scripture tells us by being honest about our weakness, God's power, not ours, but God's power is then activated activate your power, y'all. That's the theme of this month, right? 
So let's talk about how we can activate our power. It is time to boast, be, be humble and be honest about where you're weak so that God's power can come unto us. And a lot of times, like I said, I don't like to admit weakness because I think I'm burdening the people around me. And I tell you, you're not doing anyone any favors by trying not to burden the people around you. You're not doing anyone any favors except for the enemy because the enemy wants you to be fake strong. Where you are really broken, but you're pretending that you're good. The enemy loves that because then you're in no danger of activating your power when you're being fake strong. You are in no danger of activating your power when you're when you're being fake, when you're pretending like you know. You are in no danger of activating your power with fake courage. You are in no danger of activating your power with faking having it all together. And I'll start with me. I, I was just so overwhelmed in the, in the past few weeks. And I don't usually have anxiety attacks. But last Friday, not this past Friday, last Friday, I actually had an anxiety attack. I'm being honest and I'm being humble, letting you know where I am. I had so many responsibilities and I didn't want to burden the people around me about what's going on. Because in isolation, each of those things seemed too small to call help for. That's the trick of the enemy. See, God wants the big things, but even more so wants the little things because that's practice for when those bigger things come up. See, I saw other people around me also exhausted and they kept moving. So how dare I complain about my exhaustion? I was telling myself to bear it and that you're blessed. So how dare you operate in anything but joy? But I was doing no one but the enemy favors with my fake having it together or my fake joy. I was tired. I was exhausted and I was not honest. I was not humble enough to let people know I'm feeling weak. I am emotionally depleted. So for me, my anxiety attack was a notice to my physical that I wasn't doing what I already know to do. And that is to bring all of my worries, big and small, all of my cares, be honest and humble about my areas of weakness to God. I wasn't being humble and honest about that. But when you become honest and humble about your weakness, especially if it's something that that's not something that you usually do, you start to confuse the enemy. So I invite you to bring your worries to God first and stop trying to figure it out on your own and confuse the enemy. Let's boast, y'all. Be honest and humble. Where are you weak? The O in boast is to offer praise. When we begin to offer praise, like that song said, let the power fall. The power begins to fall down, which activates your already made strong power. So I'm going to ask you to put some God on it. Once you're honest and you're humble about your weakness, offer up some praise, put some God on it. So therefore, any area that you're feeling inadequate is now an opportunity for God's power and not our human power. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm an educator. You heard it. I'm an educator, so I believe in practice. So in your homes right now, I dare you. I dare you to shift your perspective to praise. What are you worried about? Put some God on that thing and then shift your perspective to praise. Praise God and give thanks. Start and end that statement with thanks. Let's practice. Lord, I don't know where I'm going to find the money. I don't have enough money. Put some God on it. Change your perspective. Thank you, Lord. I don't know where I'm going to find that money from, but thank you, you do. Lord, here we go. How about this? I don't know how I'm going to make it without. Put some God on it. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but guess who does? You do. Thank you. Oh, you laid this job on my heart, but I don't have the qualifications for that thing. Uh-uh, put some God on it. Thank you, Lord. 
I don't have the qualifications for that job, but you have already qualified me. Thank you. Listen, I can go on and on, but God is made strong in our weakness. Any area that you're feeling inadequate or insecure is an opportunity, y'all, for God's power and not for us to rely on our own power. That right there deserves some praise. We got to boast, boast, y'all, be humble and be honest about where you're weak so that we can begin to offer up some praise so that power can fall down, put some God on it. Once we've done that, it brings us to the A in boast, which is my favorite one, accept who you are. And sometimes, you may, I'm talking about me, sometimes I need a reminder about who I am so I can accept, I can accept who I am. Paul said, that is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. And I love the way that that was written because the Paul didn't just say in insults, hardships, persecutions, and, and difficulties. Mm -mm. God put in in front of each one, giving like special attention to each of those in in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. So that alerted me and the learner in me was like, what is the commonality between insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties that Paul was so intentional about the way he wrote that? So I looked it up. What's the commonality between insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties? And that's where God made this thing really, really good for me because what came up what came up and said that these are terms that all are a part of the universal human experience. I say this is where it got really good to me because aren't you glad, hallelujah, that you, hallelujah, do not have a singular experience, hallelujah, because you are not just a human, you are a spiritual being. So you're not just impacted by everything that may be a universal human experience because you are a spiritual being. Donald Lawrence's song, he sings, you're not a natural being or human having a spiritual experience. He says, you're a spiritual being living this natural experience. So I invite you to accept who you are, spiritual being. So therefore, the impact of, of the insults, the hardships, the persecutions, and difficulties that are part of the universal human or natural experience doesn't have that impact on you. It doesn't apply to you, child of God. It doesn't apply to you, vessel of God's power, because you are, in fact, a spiritual being. So if that does not apply to you, does not apply to us, then what does? If you're not subjected to the human, the universal human experience, what are we subjected to? I'll answer. We're subjected to the universal spiritual experience. So let's talk about the things common to the universal spiritual experience for all of those who know and love our God. Paul delighted and weakness. He spoke of them again as insults, hardships, persecution, and difficulties. He then said, for when I am weak, I am strong. And I often talk about that perspective because see, the enemy can't do a thing to change what God has promised you, spiritual being. So accept that. Except you are an, at an elite status. The enemy, however, only is able to trick you into forgetting about your status, spiritual being. So when that happens, we start to operate as mere mortals. We start operating as natural beings who may occasionally experience some spiritual experiences. So the A in both is to accept who you are, spiritual being, vessel of God's awesome power. The enemy tricks us into forgetting that we cannot be broken. We cannot be destroyed. We cannot lose. Think about that. Think about that. 
Are you walking around operating in lack, depending on your human power alone, what you can see, hear, and feel? Or are you walking around in your elite status as a spiritual being, a child of God? The fact that you are made strong because you were honest and shared your weakness. Then gave God some praise for doing what only God can do. Now is then where you accept who you are. So walk upright, y'all. Walk confidently. Because of your honesty and your praise, you already have been made strong. Accept your place and operate in your abundance. Where are you weak? Where is the insecurity at? Walk into the interview like the job is yours. Walk in with your elite status. Where are you weak? Apply for that loan like the money is already in your bank account. Accept your status. And I'm asking you to boast, not because it's anything that you're doing, but it's because God's power is made strong when we're honest and we're humble and we offer praise and we accept our rightful place. Again, not because of anything that you did. Even better than that is because of the blood-stained, pre-approved, and irrevocable grace, mercy, and power given to us by the sacrifices of Jesus the Christ. When we rely on our humanness, that's when pride, guilt, shame comes in. We don't, I'm talking to me, y'all. We don't share when we are in trouble because we feel maybe some shame about making the same poor decisions with our money. So, so we don't share because we shouldn't have done it again. Or we make some of the same poor decisions with a romantic partner. Or we make some of the same poor decisions with our children or with our job. So we don't like to share it because we feel shame. But that's human stuff. That's not spirit. We let pride creep in. Because maybe maybe you're the leader and you're supposed to have the answer. Or you won't call back that family member or friend because you still feel guilty about the way you guys left things off. Fear, guilt, shame, pride starts to dictate how we show up in the world and, and make us feel like we, we are not at our elite status. But that's because we are relying on our human perspective. But can I tell you that we serve a God that is not limited by that perspective. So I'm asking you to boast, boast in the weakness because then there is the opportunity for God to show up and to show out. So again, accept who you are, you spiritual being who is experiencing a universal spiritual experience. And what is that? It is grace. It's not the insults. It's mercy. It's not the hardships. It's forgiveness is not persecution. And it's overflow is not the difficulties. Because the universal, the universal spirit experience, different from the human experience, is mind-blowing. So when you start to notice that you are operating solely on your humanness, leaning into your fear because you don't know how, I don't know, whatever, fill in the blank. I dare you to just put a thank you in front of that thing and a thank you on the back of that thing. Thank you that I don't know how I'm going to get my child back on track because I know that you can allow God to be made strong. Boast. Because that praise and that change in your perspective is you accepting who you are. And that is where God is made strong, where the power is activated, enabling God's power to take over and do the things that we can't boast. Brings us to the S, surrender. You don't know what God knows. Just accept that. Surrender. You can't see what God sees. You're not everywhere God is. Remember, our, our senior bishop refers to God as her old God because God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. So stop trying to play like you know the things God knows and activate the God power within because that is where you will be made strong. Boast. This week, my, uh, my friend sent me a quote and it was so good. It said, I ask God, why are you taking me through troubled water? God replied, because your enemies can't swim. 
See, God knows things you're not privy to. So surrender to God's way because you don't know what God knows. You think that is persecution. God is hiding you because, because you don't know what God knows. So surrender. Remember, God is made strong in our weakness. God is made strong in the what we don't know. That's how we access the abundance because left to us, left to us, we will settle for our limited imagination. No matter how big and creative you think your imagination is, it is peanuts compared to what God has in store for us. So experiencing mediocrity, we will experience mediocrity because we can't conceive what God has prepared for us. The opportunity to see lack is a reminder. The opportunity to focus on our weakness is a reminder for God to step in. So stop trying to figure out the how and simply surrender because knowing how don't have nothing to do with you anyway. It's none of your business how. It's none of your business how. Just know that God is going to do it. I'm asking you to boast. To boast brings us to the T, the last letter. That's where the transfer of power happens. Allow God to do what only God can do. Those feelings of weaknesses are early warning signs. So do like Paul and be grateful for them. Delight in them. Give them over to God. Activate your made strong power. God, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling afraid. I'm feeling worried. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling hatred. I'm feeling disappointment, Lord. You fix it. Now, in Matthew, I just have to bring this, this scripture up from Matthew, and I'm going to read it from the message because it says, if your child asks for bread, do you trick him with sawdust? If he asks for fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? And as bad as you are, you wouldn't think of doing such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children. So don't you think the God who conceived you and love will be even better than the way we are with our children? God's power is made strong in these moments. God is waiting on us to give it over and stop fronting like we know what to do with it anyway. That's just being prideful. Be wise and hand it over. Transfer it because God is going to do it bigger and God is going to do it faster. And again, I'm a learner. So when I read, I was reading up on power and this really got to me and said, power is a time-based quantity, which is related to how fast the job is done. So not only the thing that activates or help that job to get done, it also dictates how fast that thing can get done. And what God has promised us is already ours, right? And God can't lie, right? So in our humanness, in our stubbornness, in our ignorance, we, we, we're not messing up our blessings, but we could slow it down going through all of these obstacle courses. We could slow down the promises or the blessings. But if you want it done bigger, if you want it done better, if you want it done faster, if you want it to be perfected, then we got to transfer the power over to the Lord. Don't waste time trying to solve a problem that isn't yours to solve. Yolanda Adams saying, this battle is not yours it's the Lord's. Then she had the nerve to go ahead and say, think about it. And then start shouting, boast, be honest about where you're weak and be humble enough to proclaim it. Then offer praise, start praising, start thanking, accept the fact that you are not subjected to the human view and surrender so that you can transfer the power and be made strong. So when those insults that Paul described, those offensive, disrespectful remarks, actions, expressions, things intending to hurt, offend, or belittle you when they come in, start shouting. Activate your made strong power because you know God is on the way on your behalf like Yolanda shared. With those hardships that Paul described, those challenges, circumstances, things that cause distress and suffering start to happen in our human experience. Remember, you are a spiritual being and start praising. Activate your made strong power because you know God is on the way on your behalf. When attempted, and I say attempted, attempted persecution. 
that Paul described happens when things are hostile or you may be being mistreated or you're feeling harassed. Start praising and activate your made strong power because that's an opportunity because God then will be on the way on your behalf. And lastly, when the difficulties that Paul described, those problems, those obstacles, complex situation, when they come in, start praising, you know, activate your made strong power because God, the skillful one is on the way on your behalf. So I encourage you to boast. And we're not boasting on our own merit. We're boasting because God is made strong in our weakness. But see, you can't boast with any without with missing any of the elements. So be sure that in your haste or your human experience, you don't try to skip one of the boast steps. Boast fully. And again, I believe in practice. So we're about to practice right now. We're going to boast together. We don't have to wait. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. Be honest and humble about where you are. Don't let shame or guilt stop you from having your moment, y'all. It's time to boast. If you're ready for the power to be activated, boast. Leave that comment. What is it? Where is your weakness? Allow God to show up. Don't hide it, y'all. If you're not ready to put what it is that you're weak about, put an emoji, do something, do something different to confuse the enemy because we have an opportunity right here to boast together, be honest and humble. That's step one. The enemy is already confused. If you're putting anything in the chat, the enemy is already confused. So let's really tear them up now. Now offer your praise. Thank God for that weakness. Thank God for that weakness. Thank God for that weakness. Because now we know God is on the way on our behalf. Offer praise. Thank you, God. I don't know where it's coming from. You do. Thank you, God. Offer praise on that thing that you were bold enough to share. Offer that praise. Let's boast, y'all. Now that we praise it, accept who you are. That weakness can't overtake you because you're privileged. You didn't know, but you're royalty. You are a spiritual being. Accept who you are. Act like you already know. Act like you already know that thing is done. Accept who you are and affirm yourself right now. You are made strong. You are the head and not the tail. You are a vessel of God's power. Do you understand that? You are a vessel of God's power. And now that you are accepting who you are, it's time to surrender. Surrender your plan. Know that God got something better than you're thinking in store already. And it's coming faster than you can make it happen because God's power is not limited by these earthly rules or man-made protocols. Now that that power has transferred, y'all, it's activated. You are declared made strong. So as you go throughout your week, don't waste an opportunity to boast. You are made strong. Boast. Ashe. Amen.
thank God for her. Let us look to the Lord. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for boasting. We thank you, God, for, for boasting, God. We thank you, God, for boasting, God. We thank you, God, for the opportunity just to be reminded that we can activate our power by showing up in the boast. God, we know that you know when we don't. And so we come at this hour saying, God, we surrender. We do surrender, God, so that the transfer, transfers of power can happen in this house. In that house is wherever we are. This house, in this house, in this house. Not just um, in the Unity Fellowship Church of Baltimore house, but in this house. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. God. Thank you. Thank you, God. And if, if there's anybody out there today, God, that needs, God, just the space to surrender, just the space to be honest about where they're in trouble, God, let them know that we can do it with them over here. This is a universal experience, universal spiritual experience that we're here to be with them. We bless your name, God. We know that you're moving right now all over the universe, and we thank you for what you've done. Of love and life in Jesus the Christ. We pray. We come today inviting you into a space of surrendering so the transference of power can take place. So if you're looking for a place where you can come and settle into the truth about who you are, reach out to us at members at ufcb.org or membership at ufcb.org and we will reach back to you. You know, there you don't have to have a special kind of altar to move down to. The altar of your heart is all the altar that you need. And if you are ready today to say, I want to give this thing a try. I want to try to boast. Let, I want you to know today that we are here with you. We are for you. And you don't need anything else to, to happen. Just say, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to surrender. Because I need that transference of power. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I don't know how I'm going to get through this illness. I don't know how I'm going to navigate this situation with my loved one leaving. I don't know. But I know you do. And I trust you. Membership at UFCB.org or members at UFCB.org. We love you. We thank God for you. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for the preach word. And we thank God for this space today. We want to take a moment to offer an offering. So if you didn't get a chance to do your offering, um, uh, you, you can reach out. You can uh, just give us, uh, reach out through realms, through checks, or through cash app. Through realms, through text, or through cash app. And uh, maybe you didn't get to do your tithe this morning, or maybe you didn't get to do your general offering, but we want you to bless this woman of God who labored. It was obvious that she didn't just wake up this morning and just show up. While we know the power was in her, and we know that if you hear a good preacher, you know they prepared strong, but the power of God moved through her in that space. Bless her today because she deserves to be blessed. We thank God for the amazing power of this woman who kicked off our Women's History Month in a powerful way. Amen. Amen. Ashe, and so it is. Let us break bread together. We come at this hour on our first Sundays because we want to activate the power in us by remembering. We remember. Somebody just type in the chat. We remember the power that was activated in Jesus, in the experience that he had, in the human experience that he had on the planet. And so like him, we invite you into that space of knowing. And so we participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And what that means for us is that we remember the body that he was in and we remember the legacy that he left in love through the bloodshed. And so at this time, God, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for blessing this experience. We thank you for the sacrifice in your life. We thank you, God, for all things. Now, bless this communion as we share it together. In the name of
love and light. In Jesus the Christ we pray. Thank you for joining us. Join us every Sunday at 1030 a.m. for our virtual worship experience. And remember, God loves you and so do we.